What I'm about to show you is going to irritate a lot of people, and I know that. Let me start by saying that um, amateur radio has a lot of modes, and a mode is, for example, FM, AM, uh, SSB, upper sideband, lower sideband, data. Now, within data alone, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of modes. The most popular currently is FT8, which some people hate, some people love. I'm sort of down the middle. I use it, but I, I understand its its limitations. But but in that the final mode it, uh, that I haven't mentioned is CW, continuous wave, and for some reason there's only one sub mode for that Morse code. That's it. Data has dozens of modes, and when new modes come out, people accept that, usually graciously. But somehow, Morse code has become sort of sacrosanct, and people have started to, you know, to, to think that there can be nothing else, that there's nothing better than Morse code. If you do your history lessons, you'll know that Morse code wasn't first. There were other methods before Morse code, and one of which involve just nine digits and a zero. Um, no, no letters at all. Samuel Morse, though, happened to be at the right place at the right time during the burgeoning tel uh, telegraphy era, um, and he, he, it stuck. His method stuck. Not because it's good, not because it's great, but because it existed and Morse published in the right place at the right time, knew the right people. There were other methods. There were other telegraphy methods. Because uh, Morse code is really hard to learn, it's stuck because there's you, you put a lot of effort. Um, there's a lot invested in it. So they used it in the military, and if you if you learned it in the military, you spent days and weeks living, eating, sleeping, breathing Morse. You'll get good at it in a, in a situation like that. Doesn't mean it was easy. Doesn't mean it couldn't have been easier, but it is what it is. The professionals, um, the telegraphers, would work 60, 80 hours a week or more, because that's what you did back then, and they're immersed in it. So they'll get good at it. It doesn't mean it's good. It just means they got good at it. And since Morse code was used up until the 1970s in the railway system, it just stuck. It was good enough. But in the 1990s, when everyone started getting cell phones, we became familiar with T9. T9 is a way to send text using tones. Now, the way the phone system did it is it used DMF tones um, for each number. Now, the problem with that for our purposes here is CW is only one tone. So I can only get one sound out of CW. So let me get the keyer plugged in. All right, you get one tone. Your phone was able to differentiate between the different tones that were associated with each number. And then the number of times you press that number would determine what letter you wanted. And you, you did this. We all did this. You could type out a message in one hand while you were driving without ever looking at the phone. You got good at T9. So if you're old, this is already in your head. You already have this skill. Samuel Morse didn't have anything to build on. It was just from scratch. So... The way this works with CW is we don't have the luxury of different tones because your, your ear can't remember nine of these and identify them. Uh, and so we give each number um, an identifier. And then after we've identified the number, we have a number of dots that identify the letter. This is way easier, by the way, than it sounds. I'm going to make this sound more complicated than it is, but I'll tell you this. I gave it to my wife and two kids, and in 10 minutes, I didn't tell them how it works. I just started sending sounds, and in 10 minutes, they understood, started to copy, and were able to send back. It took 10 minutes. Now, I knew that was going to be the case because the origin of this, for me, is that in the 1990s, I was in a group called the Sea Cadet, Naval Sea Cadets. It still exists. It's the Navy's uh, youth program. The U.S. Navy has a youth program. And we had a situation where we were sending the cadets out on their first, their first sailboat uh, trip the coming weekend. And we wanted them to communicate using CW. And the boat was equipped for it. But we also knew that they're not going to learn Morse code in a week. There's just no point trying. It wasn't going to happen. And so we gave them this chart with their, with their weekend packet. And we told them that unless there's an emergency, no phone communication. You know, you can use the, the handheld if you have to. You can use the um, Channel 16 if you have to. Uh, but if you want a sandwich, we want to hear it 
through this. So uh, by the end of the first day, they're sending and copying without the chart. So they quickly abandoned the chart. They were just, they had it down. And by the end of the second day, they were sending so fast that we couldn't keep up. We couldn't write fast enough. We had to say, you guys got to slow down because we can only, we're, we're old here. Come on, we can only write so fast. Um, they picked it up fast. So I, I knew that my wife and kids were going to pick it up fast. It's a very uh, simple system. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. With the exception of one, all of the um, numbers, two to four, are just their equivalent number of dashes. So one, two, three, you get the idea. But when you get to five, it's a single dash. And then anything after five is just a dot and a dash. The dash is five, so six is one plus five. That's six, seven is two plus five. 8 is 3. You get the idea. Okay, so you will know that a number has stopped, ended, that the number's been defined when the dots start because you'll notice that a dot never comes after a dash in the number identification. So if I hear three dashes and I start to hear dots, I know that we've got three and the number of dots are the position of the lettering. And it just it sounds complicated, but it comes naturally. Um, you just you just count them off, and, and here's how that works. Um, I'm going to show you how we copy this. I did this in a previous version of this video. I've recorded this like four times now. There's not a word here; it's just numbers. But if you if you were to send three, I know that three is the number, and two is the letter positioning, which turns out to be E. If you send four dashes and then two dots, I know that, well, that's going to be H. You send a dot dash and then two dots, I know that that's going to be N. So what we're doing is we're just saying this is the number and this is the letter place that follows that number. Very simple. Much simpler than I'm making it sound, I think. So this is great for preppers and anyone who doesn't want to learn Morse code or has had trouble learning Morse code, um, great for groups. You can use CB10 codes with this for abbreviations if your group decides that's what you're going to do. And you can use Q codes if you're using it in amateur radio bands. Um, I would suggest, as a courtesy, if you're going to call CQ uh, with T9, that you call CQ T9, CQ T9, so that anybody hearing that would know immediately you're not going to be using Morse code and they can go move on and talk to somebody else with Morse code. Because it, what that's going to tell them is chances are you already know who you're going to be talking to here. You're going to be talking to maybe one or two people that you, you expected to meet up on the air to practice this. Um, and so if you're calling CQ for a couple of your buddies, they're going to know, okay, well, you're calling CQ, but everybody also know it's, it's not Morse and they can move on. It's just a courtesy. Word space is optional. My wife and kids didn't use it. I don't use it, and I don't remember if we used it in the 90s. Because of the way we copy this, like a fraction, like number over letter placement, once you translate what you've copied, you're going to know what the numbers were anyway. You're, you're going to know what you copied. It's very easy to tell. So a three-beat word space, I feel like, is a little bit noisy. Um, in order for this to be a legitimate amateur radio um, mode, it has to be published. So I will be publishing this on uh, GitHub and all of its rules. And I think the word space, we're just going to not mention word space. I think that's problematic. Um, this kind of works out all by itself pretty well. So a uh, couple of special situations. You know one was super easy. One is a quick dot. And, and zero is, is doesn't have letters associated with it. So it's just... That's a zero. So if you remember that and one, you're halfway there. If you know that five is a dash, then you know that the number of dots that preceded it are added to five to give you the actual number. And then dots that come after the dash are your number placement. And you probably have already noticed this, but seven and nine have four possible number placements. Everything else has three. So T9. Um, when I put this on GitHub, by the way, and publish it so that it is 
can be used on the air, and it can because this is considered publishing. You could use this between two people and know how to do it. Um, I'm, I'm working on an app because I'm an electronics engineering bachelor's degree student and I'm going to need to do a capstone project. So I'm going to create an app that will do real T9. It'll just uh, convert the tones without you having to type out that it's a two. You just hit two twice and get B. And then you can use that you know, through handheld radios to send series of, of, of these T9 type signals to someone else. There's already stuff out there like that. Uh, Rattlegram is great. I love Rattlegram. Um, I don't know how well it does in, uh, you know, at low power over long distances. I don't know what, how, you know, what they're doing uh, as far as uh, how the signaling works. Um, but because this is CW, it would work just as well over distances and low power as, as Morse code does. So um, if you want to try this and uh, hook up with me on the air to do it, um, you can hit me up at kb3hxa at gmail. But please, before you do that, um, consider whether your radio can handle this because um, I invited people to contact me to practice Rattlegram. Um, and, and, and several people did, but they were running like QRP and random length antennas. And so while they could hear me, there was never a chance that I was going to hear them. So I have an ICOM 7300 and I can talk, FT8 is hemispheric, okay? So if you have a setup where you can do FT8 hemispheric, then we probably can connect as long as you're on my side of the hemisphere and not on the other side. Um, so I would love for people to contact me to try to, to get this on the air. Um, and again, there'll be an app for it, um, which you, know, you could use handheld to handheld to send the same kind of messages. Not as fun as CW. CW is much more fun. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm putting this out there. I think this is really good for preppers and just people who want to mess around with, with CW but just realize that maybe Morse code isn't in their future. I get that. So that's what I got for you. This is a celebration video for our 500th subscriber. And I want to thank the Facebook group Radio Preppers in large part for making this, uh, this video series successful. 500 subscribers and there are only eight videos on the channel. Just eight. This will be number nine. The next video I'm going to do is going to be about the Pixie uh, QRP uh, CW transmitter. I made a video about it before. Screwed it up because I was using editing software, had to take it down. So I'll make another one of those for the next one. But this is the 500 subscriber video, and I wanted to save this for a special occasion. So that's a special occasion. Um, and in addition, I want to thank anybody who's watched the videos, liked them, subscribed um, from the radio community in general. Um, I just really, I see in the data that the, the Facebook group for Radio Preppers has been a real big help, and I appreciate that, guys. Um, so reach out if you want to give this a shot. And uh, like I said, I, I will put in the comments when the GitHub page is up to make this official. Um, some details in there too. I'll just put it in the comment section when it's ready. All right. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me drone on and 7-3.